please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good afternoon, this is Closing Bell. I am Anuj. With me is Surbhi. And of course, after a long time, the market seen some kind of consolidation after the one-way rally that we have had. There have been result reaction as well. And we'll discuss those as well as we move forward. Uh, hi, Surbhi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Anuj. Yes, it's a very earnings-heavy day. I think yes. market's going through the motion. Uh, I think the TVS motor stock is pretty interesting because uh, having seen the first glance, maybe the, the market is lacking the fact that at least this time margins haven't fallen for TVS. But that stock I thought was quite interesting. It fell very sharply when the original numbers came. And since then, there's an interesting recovery. PNB we've been hearing from, mm. I mean, not as good as uh, what we saw from uh, BOB, etc. But on the market, Anuj, uh, would you treat today as, as just a pause after this big rally? Yeah, I mean, this is just a pause, Surabhi. I think mm -hmm. uh, the uh, overall, uh, what, what's been interesting today is that uh, HDFC Bank and Kotak have made a comeback. In mm. the morning, we were discussing mm. that, uh, you know, uh, there's some money which has moved out and moved into the likes of Axis Bank. Uh, but I think uh, it's just HDFC Bank and Kotak, you know, saying that, uh, you know, what are you talking about? You know, we, we're still the leaders. So that perhaps uh, explains this. Uh, I think on the numbers, uh, uh, you know, it's about market positioning. On mm. PNB, I think the entire world was talking about how the numbers this time will be better, how the loss will be cut, how, you know, mm. uh, the asset quality number. Everyone was talking about, you know, perhaps 200 basis point improvement in asset quality. Mm. And that's why, uh, you know, people were long on PNB. You know, you could see it in the charts. And that's why you've seen, uh, you know, this uh, uh, a disappointment leading to this kind of move. Uh, uh, TVS, I think, uh, stock is very close to the lows. Uh, yeah. And in that, I think uh, TVS numbers, uh, I think the market is happy about, as you said, the no margin number. bad news is, is good news, is that yes. it? Yes, <laughs> and, you know, also because, you know, it's a high pedigree stock, which yeah. is corrected a lot, hasn't had any rally. And it, it happens with TVS. Immediately after the number, it, you know, falls a bit, but then sees recovery. So that explains uh, the move on TVS. I think for me, the really perplexing number today has been Mothers and Sumi. Mm. Uh, and I think the intraday chart is very interesting. Normally, anecdotally, if you buy Mothers and Sumi at times like these, when the stock has corrected a lot, mm. you make money. But I think today's numbers, first of all, you know, there was a problem in understanding the numbers. They're all over the place. And the chart is also all over the place. So I think this is one number that I would want to study in detail. And, you know, we'll talk to the management as well yeah. and try to find out, you know, what happened here. Okay, more and more numbers um, floating through. It seems lots of people have uh, gone to the holiday parks at Wanderla Holidays just, running 6-7% yeah, upon that Just stock. one point also mm -hmm. I wanted to make. Uh, I think Dwarike Sugar came out with numbers. Mm -hmm. And I think they've reported profit. Uh, mm -hmm. Even though profit has fallen year on year, but last quarter was a loss. Mm -hmm. uh, what's really interesting is that, uh, uh, you know, if, if Dwarike has reported profit in that case, uh, uh, is, the, is the worst really over for sugar companies. That's also something that I would want to find out because there's a bit of a dichotomy here right now. Mm. Domestic sugar prices are high and while there's, you know, of course, different position globally. So that's something that, of course, we'll find out. But, but let's do one thing. Uh, uh, a lot of stocks surging and a lot of stocks falling. So being a very mixed market, let's tell you how to position yourself in this last hour of trade. Ashwini Gujjal and Mitesh Thakkar with us for closing strategies. Good afternoon. Ashwini, your thoughts first. Uh, uh, today is a day where you have traded the boundaries. Uh, uh, what's the call for last hour? See, that's the way to go and uh, that was basically clear yesterday when buying the dip didn't really work out. So uh, today narrow range, but it was possible to trade it. So far uh, it looks sideways and nothing serious, but uh, given the size of the move and how far away we are from averages, this could continue for a few days. Now, PNB is down 7% and that's not having a great impact on other PSU banks. We'll have to see, you know, how well, uh, you know, the banks take this sort of result. So, uh, for the moment, uh, what you want to do is uh, buy into Titan, which is a buy with a stop of 920, target of 956. USL is a sell with a stop of 605 target of 570 and Bajaj Finance uh, you know several sideways days it's now looking to get out of that range that's a buy of the stop of 2700 target of 2820. Okay so uh, that's Ashuni's list for the last hour by the way metal stocks are making a bit of a move all of them the whole sector seems to be moving higher Tara Steel a day is high Hindalco is up Vedanta is seeing plenty of buying so some of the metal names are seeing momentum surrounding them now. The index itself is, of course, uh, trending a little higher. 
Uh, Mitesh, good afternoon. How do you read today's slight pause and, of course, your trades the last hour? Good afternoon. I think this pause uh, or maybe you know, consolidation might continue for the next few days. I think the while the trend in uh, health on the short-term chart patterns is quite positive, I think the intraday charts are very stretched and maybe, you know, you will see anything close to about 11,450, 500 zones attract profit booking while buying should come at any kind of dip. So maybe we will be kind of range bound for the next few days after a good uh, last uh, two weeks of up move. But uh, broadly we are still trading with more of long buys. So right now I have one buy and one sell call. Uh, Grassim is getting into a positive mode on the intraday charts. It's moved up slightly, try to buy it around 1,020. Keep a stop below 1,000, look for 1,060 as your target. And uh, I have one sell that's on Tata Chemicals. Sell with a stop at 685 for targets of 645. Okay, Aspitulsen of and Amrish Baliga are with us. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Mr. Tulsen, I first wanted your thoughts on the uh, two big numbers and we'll talk about M&M as well. But let's first, first talk about Madhusan Sumi and TVS Motor and your thoughts on both these numbers. Anuj, I think both the numbers are good. Now, if I first come on the mothers and Sumi, you have to read in context to the uh, new accounting standards having introduced. Now, that has shown a growth of about 10%. And even if I exclude the excise duty, you know, it's about maybe 11, 12, 13% on the, on the revised because the last year's numbers have not been revised. And otherwise, the top line growth is about 24% without giving this effect. Now, if you really see it on a YOY basis, because I don't think that there is any point in taking a QOQ call. Now, come on the YOY basis, income has risen. I'm not referring to the published result where I've said that the growth is, top line growth is just 10, 11%. But on a say on a like-to-like -like basis, the top line growth is 24%. EBITDA growth is 24%. The PAT has risen by 70% plus. You know, if you really see the EBITDA, as I said, 24%, obviously the tax adjustment and all that, those things are there. But those also have to be incorporated. And I think these numbers are seen to be really quite good. And if I just come on the on the segments, if you take the PKC segment, PKC, the EBIT has risen from 84 crores to 160 crore. And even on SMR and SNP also, the things are looking quite good with a good sequence with a with a good YOY growth on the EBIT. So I don't think that one can really expect the better numbers than this. And I think that this should really cheer once the results will be understood by the market. Uh, I'm, I'm in, in fact, if you see the presentations having completed 27 projects in the in the nine countries those will, will start yielding the numbers uh, results from here on and i won't be surprised to see the company you know reporting closer to nine plus eps and if you take that into consideration i think that will this will be seen quite positive 1.30 like 1.3 lakh crore orders you know which which constitutes about maybe two years top line so i don't understand in fact on any of the on any of the parameters i don't see any disappointment coming now on tvs motor again the tvs motor numbers are seen to be good if you see the PBT, 212 against 192 crore, if I go by a simple math, the, the volume growth has seen a growth of about 4, 4.5% four and, and that has seen reflected into the top line also, 4, 4.5%. Four but the PBT has risen by about 10%. And as I said, sometimes, you know, you have Q4, as this is again, this I'm referring here, TVS motor on a sequential, because since you have the sales figures with you and sales numbers were higher in Q1 uh, over Q4, and because of the higher tax provisions to about 66 crore for Q1 against 27 for crore for Q4, you know, see you you found a PAT maybe a bit lower at 147 crore against 167 crore. But again, again, the numbers are seen to be quite good. And I have always been saying that all these numbers have to be read in conjunction with the share prices at which they have been ruling. Now, TBS Motor had its high of about closure to 800 rupees, having corrected to a level of 550. So, you know, you do not have much downside seen from here. And if you have these kind of numbers coming in, you don't see any kind of margin pressures seen coming in and they have been increasing their market share. So again, positive view on uh, on TBS motor numbers also and extremely positive on mother son after this Q1 numbers having seen. Okay, so that's a thumbs up from Mr. Tulsian on two of the auto numbers that we've seen today. By the way, PNB is really, really falling now, 7.5%, almost 8% of a decline. Let's just uh, pull up the intraday chart over there. Uh, that's today's performance and let's also pull up maybe a six month or one year now this is one stock that anyway didn't rally too much it, this is not a state bank of india but nonetheless whatever little incremental uh, up move we had from the lows even that is getting sold into as we speak amrish balika is also with us uh, amrish we, we do talk about psu banks yeah. and i mean you've been a contrarian right but looking at for instance what pnb has done their slippages number numbers are still slightly higher yeah. they've provided less this time so the loss is not that big but there is still a long way to go with respect to provisioning absolutely your thoughts on the stock 
Uh, see, <coughs> I think uh, the expectation from the market uh, as far as PNB is concerned, looking at the other PSU banks which have declared, I think the expectation had moved up, uh, uh, I think, a bit. But then we should remember that PNB was in the middle of the storm. I mean, it c clearly cannot move in line with the other PSU banks because I think there are, uh, at least for the next two or three quarters, you'll have some provisioning as far as uh, uh, Nero Modi case is concerned. And uh, I think that's clearly said by the management. Looking at that and looking at what the management has stood, said today, I think uh, it can correct a bit more, but I do not see it really going below the levels which we had seen earlier. I mean, clearly, I, I'm, uh, 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 I don't see it going down below 74, 75. So I think closer to 80, 81. If one is looking at the next one year, I think that's a, uh, uh, that's a level to start uh, picking up because once you see the next two, two quarters results for PNB, possibly you'll have the interest coming back. Okay. Mr. Wilson, your thoughts on PNB and uh, why do you think the, the street is reacting the way it is now on the stock? Shanuj, if I really see the numbers, I, I honestly did not find them to be, to be, to be too bad. You know, maybe the slippage one, slippages, one can say that the 7,000 crore plus seem to be a bit on the higher side. But if you really ask me the reason for correction, it is just the victim of the overbought positions because people have gone overboard and, you know, gung-ho after seeing the numbers of Canara Bank and, and you know, Bank of Baroda uh, numbers and, you know, have started extrapolating that probably we will be seeing the same effect. Probably the replicator, replication of Canara and Bank of Baroda may be seen in SBI, but expecting that from PNB, you know, who has been in the in the ICU, you cannot expect them to come on the on, on, off its, on its own legs just in one quarter. So I don't think that even if you take the Nira Modi case, which uh, Amrish has just now narrated, I, I agree that, you know, that provisioning pain will be there, but that is already seen now reflecting into the share price. And if you want to be a fundamental investor, you know, probably the victim of the of the technicals, you know, may see the liquidation pressure can bring it down the share price to about 80. But if I am an investor and if the share price is seen, if I am if I am a medium term investor with a view of about three to six months, I won't mind buying at 83. But if you are a cautious investor, look to enter into the stock at 80 rupees, probably you are going to see the price of 85 coming in maybe next one month or so. So it is mainly the pressure of long liquidation. Market was seen in heavily overbought and these four or five banks, you know, the larger ones, like as I said, Canara, Bank of Baroda, SBI, PNB, the two people do take, you know, extrapolate the same uh, trend which they've seen in other two banks, you know, getting applied here also, which has gone little haywire and that's why we are seeing this weakness. Okay, um, and PNB's reality check has kind of sobered out the entire sector. Most of the stocks were anywhere under pressure and are uh, trading close to the lows of the day. Union Bank, OBC, UCO, BOB, Andhra, most of the PSUs <clears throat> kind of out of favor today after the big rally that we have seen. So that is uh, indeed the big question, what happens to this PSU rally from here on? Welcome back, very quiet on the index, uh, very close to the flat line as we're speaking. Since we're discussing banks, I just was looking at uh, Axis Bank trying to buck the trend. It's still negative, but there's some buying uh, out here in this one. Amrish, uh, there's some interest that's returned in the all-time favorites, uh, HDFC Bank, for instance. Uh, how would you be looking at some of these names, whether it's Kotak Bank or HDFC Bank, because they kind of came to the back seat last couple of trading sessions as yes. the interest was on the PSUs. Yeah, uh, I'm actually talking from an investor's angle. Hmm. I think HDFC Bank, HDFC or a Kotak, has to be there in the core portfolio. This is not something which you should try and uh, 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 exit at a particular price, try and buy it back. I think that's to be done by, by, by traders. But then what I've been saying now for the last, uh, I, I mean, especially two or three months is possibly there's a time to actually start accumulating PSU banks. Again, not as a very long-term investment, but looking at the next possibly 12 to 18 months when you'll see interest coming back into the PSU space and that should be the time to possibly exit. And in these stocks, which, are, which would uh, I mean, actually get discovered in the next six to nine months, you can actually make much more than possibly what you would make in these private sector banks. But then that doesn't mean that the private sector banks are, are a sell. It should be there in the portfolio, but pick this up to get that alpha in your portfolio. Okay, pick them up to get the alpha in your portfolio. Mr. Tulsan, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Thoughts also on uh, Maru, uh, oh, sorry, uh, on Mahinda and Mahinda now, and how would you compare it with, say, an Escorts now, uh, uh, in terms of uh, relative uh, performance from here on? Sianuj, again, the farm segment has really shown excellent numbers, and I don't think that you can compare that with uh, Escorts. They are they are seen to be way ahead with a bit seen of 1,045 crore. 
again 723 crore on a sequential basis are seen to be way ahead and in fact if you if you see the take the call you know with the monsoon normal monsoon scene again maybe after generally you know you you see august september or maybe september october as little lower months for the tractor sales but again october uh, november and uh, december or maybe october november you know allow two two months to be little lull you again see the tractor sales you know seen picking up so i think overall the this segment is really going to do quite well and that will really be a growth driver and coming on the passenger vehicle segments also i think the company has performed well with a with 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 a bit of about 554 crore against against yoy closure to about 300 crore also is seen to be you know giving them the rising power or maybe in a returning back so overall keeping a positive view but, but since if you have asked me on the farm sector specifically in, in compared to escorts i will keep a positive view on mahindra and mahindra this Okay. By the way, just look at Merck's numbers, and you know this MNC Pharma companies are really coming out with startling numbers. I mean, that's the uh, uh, Merck, 48.3 crores versus 20 crores. Uh, I think three or four days back we were discussing GSK Pharma's numbers. Mm. So, uh, I, I think Merck's numbers look phenomenal because the EPS from 7.2 rupees has gone to 20 rupees. Uh, uh, even the net sales uh, are quite uh, quite good. So the revenue number is also quite good. So. uh big uh, that really has been the segment where uh, i think uh, i don't think there's been any disappointment as far as mnc pharma is concerned <laughs> after a long time you see mnc pharma come out with this kind of numbers so oh yeah that's a big move on mark uh, stock is shooting away as we're speaking uh well actually talking about stocks that are on the up move maybe we can pull up an intellect design arena now this is one it mid cap it play that's anyway done really well today they came out with the news that uh, they have uh, they've received uh, an order a deal from a uh, south uh, uh, from an asian bank didn't give too many details but anyway it got the stock really fired up uh, mr tulsi and before we let you go today any thoughts on intellect design arena stock making fresh highs as we speak today so we are not tracking lately this stock because i have not been keeping the positive view on the stock since it's got the restructured maybe couple of years back and since then i have never taken a look so difficult for me to comment this rise after so sam thanks a lot uh, for joining us today we'll have chat with you tomorrow mark is now up 10% by the way so that stock is seeing a big move the other stock which is making a big move right now is hevels and uh, ever since its numbers actually that's been one stock on the move uh, i just just uh, see the chart once again on hevel 671 is what you have on the stock uh, amrish uh, a quick thoughts on this one uh, i mean hevel is again uh, looking at the sort of performance has been showing i think uh, at at uh, sort of uh, uh, any sort of dips in fact it uh, like it gave a decent dip in the recent past yeah. i think uh, that's clearly a buying opportunity but i mean as a trader i think one should even look at buying at these levels uh, it's a uh, uh, it's looking quite okay right now for the market uh, net profit uh, the mercs numbers still flashing on the screen up about 12% on that stock uh, uh let's uh, take some more thoughts from amrish uh, uh amrish uh, your thoughts on text by the way bombay dyings numbers will flash on the screen as well there's a loss of 93 crores versus 32 crores amrish your thoughts on textile stocks no textile stocks again i mean you have to talk of pure textiles and uh, those uh, with uh, uh, i mean land and real estate and uh, clearly bombay dying falls in that so i don't think we should really look at the sort of uh, loss uh, which we are seeing uh, uh, i mean as of now but i think if one needs to look at this stock from the perspective of the next 4 to 5 years and the sort of uh, uh, i mean uh, monetization of the real estate which they have and uh, i think that's stupendous i mean uh, even looking at the sort of market cap it has now i think it can actually multiply at least 3 or 4 times from here so if you have a 5 6 year view I think this is a buy at yeah, uh, like I just want to talk price. about this uh, I haven't gone through the details but for Bombay dying look at the manner in which the real estate revenue has collapsed my guess is this has happened because of NAS 115 because accounting norms have changed and now you can uh, not recognize unless the project is fully complete so that partial completion method is no longer relevant so from 234 crores of revenue for the real estate business the recognized revenue this quarter is only about 11 crores so that could have skewed perhaps uh, the top line number as well amrish i think this is affected across i mean yeah. you look at godish property you look at mahindra yeah. life but then uh, i mean when you're looking at real estate you can never look at it from a quarter to quarter basis mm. one needs to look at the sort of value which is there and the value creation which can happen over the next 5 to 6 years because most of these projects are very long term projects although they may be broken into i mean uh, at least four or five uh, smaller projects but then i think you should look at it from a value creation mm. from a 5 to 6 year angle yeah that's what they've said also in their notes uh, note 4a that uh, the uh, the uh, india s115 
uh, revenue from contracts with customers has been applied and therefore there are the changes that you're seeing in the real estate numbers uh, for Bombay dying stock is down 5% now okay. as we speak on it. So let's do yeah let's do one thing just about two minutes left before we invite uh, Mr. Segal the good time to get you the BTSD calls from our technical experts. Uh, Ashwini, you go first. Uh, I'm assuming you will not be taking too many index calls now. It's been a rather flat day, but uh, if you are, what would that call be? And what about individual stocks? The index has been a narrow range day, so uh, not likely to move now. But uh, individual stocks, SEAT is a buy with the stop of 1380, target of 1440. BATA is a buy with the stop of 950, target of 975. And Excite is a buy with a stop of 280, target of 294. Okay, so going with three buys there, Ashwini. Mitesh, what about you? What are you doing for the last half hour? <clears throat> yeah, two buys from me as well. Uh, NMDC is a BTST with a stop below 113, you look for a 118 kind of target. And uh, India Cements uh, has managed to give some intraday breakouts. So buy with a stop at 119, look for 126 as your target. Okay, so those are the BTST calls. Mother San Sumi has reported its Q1 numbers. The margins are in line and net profit has come above estimates. Vivek Chan Segal, chairman of the Mother San Sumi Group, now joins us. Uh, Mr. Segal, good afternoon. In your presentation, you say that the 24% revenue growth is adjusted for startup costs and you incurred 15 million euro startup costs this quarter. Will it continue in the upcoming quarters or has everything been adjusted in this quarter? Revenues have been uh, have gone up 24% year on year, but the uh, main differential is the new accounting standard, uh, which is there in the uh, uh, slide number four and five of the presentation, uh, which by law we have to now change to in, in AS 115. Uh, so in that sense, the revenues have been uh, downstated. And uh, what we have done so that everybody understands and compares it to last year, We've given you both the, uh, uh, the uh, how do you say, it? both the numbers, the numbers with uh, the end AS and as if uh, we had uh, followed our last year uh, presentation. So on that basis, 24% uh, uh, consolidated revenues have gone up. Uh, last year, the numbers, for example, uh, was uh, uh, 12,987. Uh, 12, this year is 14,583. But uh, had we taken 1543, which is uh, the uh, differential because of India's, uh, in AS accounting standards, uh, the number would have been 16106. Okay, got that point. So, yes, in AS 115 is, of course, really changing PL across different sectors. Now, uh, for you, growth rates in SMR have also come down. Revenue from what we see is up just 1%. Uh, EBITDA is up 2%. I, I want to understand if, if you look at the right numbers or is there here also some kind of an NDAS impact or is this a order slowdown issue? The key point is that uh, we have not at any point said that SMR is going to keep on growing incessantly. They have an uh, optimized uh, particular level where they are. They have about 26, 27% the global market share. Now, whatever we increase the top line will be at the cost of the bottom line. We are growing in so many other aspects as well. So we don't think that we have to pursue the top line just because, uh, you know, uh, everybody gets excited by that. I think the mirror company is doing phenomenally well. Uh, even though the revenue is, you know, 1% up, EBITDA is up 2%, their ROAS has gone to almost 48%, which is fantastic. So we, we believe that uh, every growth that's going to take place in Mother Sun is not necessarily in a particular vertical per se. It normally will come through acquisition, new uh, uh, content per car, going up in a car, and things like that. So we think that somewhere down the line, uh, we've been trying to explain this to all our uh, shareholders, and I think they understand it very well, that Madison is all about content per car and not about one particular company going incessantly or just after market share. Okay, getting back to the original question, the S&P business impacted due to uh, startup costs, uh, 15 million euros versus 12 mil million euros. Has all of it been adjusted uh, in this quarter's P&L or will there be more startup costs? In the last three years, we have put into uh, place 21 new plants. As far as we are concerned, kind of order book that we guided you last quarter, we're almost done with our new plants and things like that. So these startup costs are all going to start coming down, really, in the coming quarters. Uh, as new models come in, 
well, the uh, startup cost is there, but that has already been written off from our profit and loss account. So the, the point that we are trying to explain to you is that with a company as complex as Madison Sumi, multiple uh, uh, divisions are growing at a particular thing, new plants are coming in, those plants have startup costs just so that we can make it a kind of a, a understanding line so that all the investors can understand that. But uh, uh, as far as we are concerned, we are very conservative. We, we write off all the startup costs completely. So we're not sort of taking it to our balance sheet either. So another European company that you acquired, PKC, that seems to be doing really well for you. Revenue growth 17%, EBITDA growth 40%. Uh, so is this something sustainable? What is your anticipation from the PKC business? We've been saying it for the last one year that PKC, you know, was totally uh, uh, an asset which was a, uh, uh, it was like a gift to Mother Son. Because think about it, you know, they have a standalone rose of 7%. And uh, uh, Mother Son on a standalone basis for wiring harness could go plus uh, 55, 60%. So that gap is now trying to show in just one year, the team has done a phenomenal job. Uh, the revenues are up because the trucking cycle in America is doing much better. But you can see the real difference happening in the uh, uh, EBITDA, PAT, and PBT. Uh, they're all uh, fantastic numbers and absolutely coming very close to what we, what we were talking about. I think uh, 2020, we should be coming very close to uh, 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 35 40%. Uh, uh, rose over there. So uh, very, very excited and uh, very uh, glad that uh, PKC uh, is doing so well. The S&P margin is 6.6% versus 8% year on year. Now, I understand some part of this is because of startup costs. But once everything is on stream, are we looking at double digit margins? Yeah, definitely. You see, I think uh, once the plants uh, 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 fluctuate and they actually start uh, producing on a normal basis, uh, the numbers start looking up and uh, could go to the uh, double-digit numbers, uh, as, as we all hope. But uh, I think, you know, uh, this is the second thing uh, uh, which is very important for you, uh, the people to understand. Our job is to give Madison Sumi Systems a 40% plus rose. Uh, it's not that every vertical we have to look at that kind of a margin improvement and things like that. The totality of the whole thing should be giving uh, uh, the investors the confidence that Madison will deliver a plus 40% uh, kind of rose. So that's the whole idea. Not all businesses can deliver that kind of rose, but in a cumulative basis, it's very, very important for us uh, to ensure that they're moving in the right direction. So SMP is a very capital heavy uh, kind of thing, so the rose is always uh, a little bit under pressure. But uh, definitely, uh, overall scheme of things, uh, it does fit in very, very well. Okay. Sir, uh, let's just talk about the standalone business as well. What kind of growth do you see for this in the current year? Uh, are there any headwinds like uh, perhaps higher input costs? Could that be a deterrent? Or in case there is an increase in uh, raw material prices, will you just pass it on? I think our uh, standalone business has done well. Uh, there are uh, certain challenges. I think the raw materials have gone up and uh, adequate uh, 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 provisions have been made. But uh, we are on the conservative side. So I would still uh, say wait for the whole year numbers to come and then you will see a better uh, performance on the standalone as well. Uh, I think uh, uh, there is a little bit of confusion, but they will all uh, sort of come out. Uh, most of our uh, uh, supplies in India are uh, more on the passenger vehicle side where the axle load and all that thing doesn't affect too much. But uh, uh, by and large, uh, we are very happy with what uh, the standalone is delivering. Uh, it includes uh, wiring harness, it includes plastic parts and things like that. Uh, most of that has got no connection really with uh, the axle uh, uh, kind of a problem in the commercial vehicle side or the confusion which is there. But yes, the numbers would uh, come down a bit, a little bit, but I, you know, you have to take it in the stride. You have to take it in the stride. All right, uh, Mr. Segal, thanks a lot uh, for your time today. Uh, that's, of course, uh, Madhasan Sumi uh, trying to explain, uh, you know, uh, what went on in this quarter. It's been uh, a decent quarter for Madhasan Sumi. But uh, we have our next guest joining us, Sandeep Rayana, Associate Director at Edelweiss Investment Research, now joins us. Sandeep, hi, good afternoon. Good day to get you, actually, because I remember you've been talking about this rally in PSU banks being just a trading play. Uh, we have numbers from PNB and the stocks down about 8%. Uh, uh, 
you you maintain that uh, the 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 rally that we had uh, in PSU Bank is perhaps coming to an end and it's still preferable to play it via the private banks. See, I'll tell you, uh, overall, I'll always prefer private banks, so there is no doubt about that. But uh, as a trading bet, of course, I told you before also, we just have to look at the NPS, how the gross NPS and NNPS are performing. Let's say, I think, off late, if you see a few of the uh, PSUs, their gross NPS are kind of stable. So that just gives us comfort in the sense that maybe it's a good trading bet. And we just have to keep on monitoring the uh, on the quarterly basis how their GNP and NP will perform. And of course, uh, like uh, I think last time I had come, that time Canada had delivered the numbers and they grew I think at 20 odd percent uh, on the NIS side and of course their GNP had come down. So that's why it did well. So we just have to look at companies where GNP or NNP are coming down or at least stable for PSU Bank and then it can be a good trade for us. So, Sandeep, that means that, um, you know, you're saying that whatever we've seen on an Axis or even an ICICI bank or maybe even an SBI, I'm talking about the big three on the Nifty, which form, uh, you know, part of this corporate category. Uh, do you see that the trading rally on these three stocks is over or at least for these three, there could be further upside? Uh, there can be further upside for these guys, and uh, I think they can do well. So, uh, can can we can these guys give you 30, 40 percent return in there? Uh, answer for that is no. Can uh, is there a 10, 12 percent further left in these stocks? Yes. And I'm saying we have to look at every quarter, or maybe uh, yeah, every quarter how the numbers are performing. So let's say hypothetically we say that you know next quarter of these three, four companies, you know GNP is further controlled, and they're able to grow at let's say 15, 18 percent. Uh, will I continue my trade? The question is, the answer is yes. And let's say there is further increase GNP and all that stuff. Uh, will I exit the calls? The answer for that is again yes. It's like that. Okay. Let's discuss broader market now because uh, obviously the mood is much better than you know the last time that we spoke. Uh, so we can discuss perhaps some themes. Uh, paper stocks have done well of late. Uh, and you know what's interesting is you have a couple of paper stocks that you like. Uh, uh, tell us uh, why you like say a JK paper or Orient paper. In fact, I did remember, Anuj, with the, you remember that uh, last year had come, we had spoken about JK papers and uh, uh, the sector as a whole. So as a, as a sector, the sector is doing very well just because of two, three reasons. One, your paper prices have stabilized and they are in fact moving up by three, four percent. Uh, on the other hand, your raw material is coming down, at least in the domestic side, that is the wood and wood pulp. So what is happening is your realization is moving up, your raw material is coming down, suddenly your EBITDA is, or more so your gross profit is expanding. With that, your cost being st stable, your EBITDA is shooting up. And this is not function of only one stock. Look at all the paper stocks which are coming out and look at all the stocks they are performing. Every stock is performing very well because the numbers have started coming now. Now, there are two, two, three stocks which we like the most, like Orient and JK. Now, the reason why we like JK is, one, he's expanding <coughs> capacity. And right now, the capacity, if you look at, more of, most of the stocks are doing very well because the operating capacity is closer to 75, 80 levels. Now, JK Paper is the only company who's expanding capacity in the paper side. And he is right now 4.42 lakh tons. He's adding further 1.5 and, and further 2. So he will be around 7.5 uh, lakh ton in next two years. And that is the kind of growth you'll see from volume and from revenue both. And this stock is available to us at closer to 4.5, 4.6 EV EBITDA. Generally, these try stocks in good times trade at seven times. So, you know, there's a good upside left. And off late, you have seen how the stocks have performed post their results, post the number coming in. Okay. Um, uh, you know, Sandeep, I know that you do like consumer stocks. I mean, who doesn't in the Indian market, right? But the picks that you shared with us earlier were very interesting. You did not go for the usual names, the Godrej and the Maricos of the world. Uh, you picked up a company like uh, Aditya Birla Fashion Retail. I remember this one clearly because the numbers were blowout this quarter. And since then, the stock has started stirring from the dead. Otherwise, I mean, nobody talks about this stock. Uh, why AB Fashion Retail? And the other one, I think, is Century Ply, which you're looking at as a consumer play. Right. So, uh, before talking about these stock, <coughs> let me talk about the um, uh, sector per se. So, we are looking at the consumer number. So, a lot of consumer companies we are looking at. So, if you see the trend uh, from FY 11, 12, 13, 14, till 14, actually, all of these guys were growing. Uh, in fact, till 15 also. From 16 onwards, till, uh, so that is last two and a half years. Most of these sector companies, if you see the revenue has started declining. The pace of growth has come down. So, they were growing at 20 to 20%. 
talking today, they have, st have started growing at 10 odd percent. So that's why we saw most of these companies corrected actually because there was a P D rating and of course there was an EPS reduction. So this led to actually the sector not doing well. Now coming to quarterlies, if you see in last two, three quarter, most of these stocks, at least the leaders have started picking up, at least on the revenue side and also on the profitability. So like uh, the names what you spoke about, like Century or let's say ABFRL, if you see in last two, three quarters, ABFRL started giving good numbers by improving his margins, EBITDA margin, also giving a decent revenue growth. And that's why you saw when there was a third quarter, which was very good, suddenly you saw 20, 30% rally in the stock in next two, three years post results. Similarly for Century also if you talk about, they have given a reasonably good uh, growth. And the good part about Century is available to us I think 12 or 12.5, 12.5 to FI20. Now uh, both the companies, if you see the core ROC will be around, for Century it will be 25% and for ABFRL it will be around 25-30%. And if I just talk about the non pandur side which is your Madhura garments, that's at 50-55% ROC. So I'm saying these companies should reasonably do well. And I think consumption stocks should be looked at. Uh, I'll just say, just look at the quarterly numbers, how the quarterly numbers are behaving, the stocks which are giving you good quarterly numbers, just go for it and just buy them. Okay, all right, interesting uh, thoughts, Sandeep. Thanks very much for joining and appreciate you sharing some of the recommendations with us as well. So that's Edelweiss and how they are looking at uh, some of the themes like paper.